So today I'm talking about inner canopy lighting. Most cannabis lighting has been focused on the top line. So why in the world would we make things complicated by adding light into the center of the top? There we go. Text works. All right. So here's the idea, right? We have we have a crop. We keep putting more and more light on it. We know that cannabis responds favorably to light. One percent light, one percent yield. Kind of, right? For those of us who have invested in high intensity lighting, we know that it does increase, but that increase eventually has diminishing returns. It also comes with some challenges. The environment is more difficult to grow and manage. You're more susceptible to issues when you do that. From a plant physiology standpoint, the top of your crop can only take so much light. At a certain point, those photons need to pass through to be useful. So if we keep pumping more and more and more onto the top, and the hope is that it's going to pass through to the bottom. The bottom of the crop is where our challenge is at. We want high market grade, large, dense flowers everywhere. We get that at the top, but what about the middle and the bottom? So the idea behind inner canopy is that we can address challenges with product quality, decrease large, increase the size, density, and appearance of lower and mid canopy flower by moving light away from the top where it is less efficiently used and putting it inside of the canopy to help that light starve space. The outcome of this, in theory, is that we have a more efficient system. Your entire canopy is working to use those photons and drive flower development so that your crop is ripening at the same rate and at the same level of quality. Ultimately, what that means is that in a market where size, density, and appearance of flower commands a market premium on price, we can increase the value of a harvest with inner canopy versus a top right only solution. So that's the concept. What I want to show you about is, does it make any more money? Because that's really the question. I know it works. I got the data. We'll talk about that. But what the data really needs to show you is that there's an economic return. So in this talk, we're going to be focusing not only on the data that supports the change and what to expect, but also on how you make more money by applying this technology. All right, so the first thing that I want to point out, ooh, sorry, don't do that. First thing I want to point out is we actually have data. It's real data. It's not data from a tent. It's not data from two plants. We have multiple commercial grower partners operating in highly competitive markets in multiple states and in multiple countries. So my ICL data, that's intercanopy lighting, comes from growers in the Netherlands, growers in Michigan, on the West Coast, in the central United States, in Florida. Our data is coming from real world applications. So I think that's important to point out because a lot of other data isn't. We didn't make this stuff up. This is what's actually happening out in the world. So what does that data say? Let's talk about trends. First off, we all know that cultivar to cultivar, place to place, there's variability. So I'm just gonna give that disclaimer and then move on to general trends. When you take every study that we've done and you pull it all together, this is what you see. First off, the value proposition in inner canopy lighting is about making denser, larger flower. So on the left, that's what you get with a top light. Typical, right? From 46% A grade, right? Big buds. For those who don't know what A or B grade is, uh, that's weed on the right, in case you didn't know that. Uh, <laughs> top is B grade, right? Smaller nugs. Uh, a, A grade at the bottom, larger nugs. So, you know, something that's three quarters an inch, one inch or larger is usually a big bud. And then you got smalls and then you have trim. So, 46% A grade, 30 percent trim 25 percent b grade that's our sort of typical top light distribution 
when we used ICL on average, if you pull it all together, you see that increase from 46 to 55% A grade. And we also see a concurrent decrease in trim from 29 to 21%. B grade shifts a little bit. So the big thing here is we're reducing the low cost waste fraction of trim and we're enriching the amount of big A buds that we get. So if the market cares about the size and appearance, then you're making more money off of the same raw biomass. What you're not doing is changing yield or THC. So light is light when it comes to yield for the most part. We can talk about that in detail later. Uh, and THC concentration did not change. So the way I look at this is I have no risk of decreasing yield. I have no risk of decreasing the quality of the cultivars in terms of potency. But what I can do is I can increase the amount of value fraction that I create and reduce the amount of waste. So let's, let's look at the economics of this. What does this matter? Let's talk, let's talk dollars. Think about it, we've got two scenarios to really consider. The first scenario is a new build. So in a new build, I can go all top light, or I can put some of that light into the inner canopy. Practically, about a third of your light as inner canopy seems to work pretty well. So in this scenario, we're looking at a 900 PPFD build where we either do 900 top, or we do 600 with 300 equivalent in the inner canopy. That's option one. The other option or other scenario is a retrofit. I already have top light, I wanna add more. Do I add it as top light or do I add it as inner canopy? Is there an economic difference? Let's find out. So the scenario that we're considering here is one where we have an existing 900 PPFD design and we're adding 300 either as more top light fixtures or as a inner canopy retrofit. Let's look at the assumptions in this model. So I modeled out a 1,600 square foot canopy room, basic eight foot or eight four by 50 benches, roughly five and a half cycles a year, 50 bucks a fixture install, which is reasonable for a top light and is an absurdly high cost for inner canopy. So we're being very conservative with our costs. Uh, electrical, 15 cents a kilowatt hour. So that's a national average value. And then I said, all right, let's add, let's have some market value assumptions for our A, B, and C grade bonds. So these are wholesale prices, thousand bucks for your A, about 700 for your B, and a hundred bucks for your trim. So some places that's pretty low. Some places that's about right in, a few places that's a little too high. So we're working with a conservative average just to ballpark this. In these designs for yield assumptions, what I'm saying is that whether it's top light or it's top light for ICL, if you're putting the same flux in, you're gonna get the same yield. So we're not making any assumptions about improving yield efficiency, we're just saying light is light. And then what I'm saying is light is light. So if I add more light, I get more yield, but I'm not saying that ICL does anything different. So really the only thing we're focusing on here is the A, B, and trim fractions changing. And these numbers that we use in this model were derived from the data that I presented earlier. So these numbers are exactly what I showed you in those pie charts. So let's look at what this does. Don't focus too much on this. You can go through it with me later. I'll highlight the parts that matter. Um, just know that uh, I got a big old Excel spreadsheet that we can walk through and I'm gonna highlight the key points here. The first thing that we notice is that it is more expensive to install inner canopy lighting than it is for top light. So you do have a CapEx premium that you're gonna have to spend on up front in order to adopt this. The good news is that we see financial return on this as well. The first thing is that it's a more efficient technology. You're delivering your photons directly into the canopy so you have less photons going on walls or having to travel uh, or being intercepted by portions of the plant that aren't productive so you have more efficacy. You're getting more light to the plant for the same amount of energy and the technology is a more efficient emitter. So you do save some money on electrical costs. But the big take home is that increasing that A grade and decreasing waste trim enriches the value of the harvest. So this is where you make your money back. 
when we look at the payback period of top light versus ICL, in both of these scenarios, intercanopy lighting pays for itself within six months. So one to three segments uh, of a room. So you have a very short payback time. And once you have done that, then you begin to realize increased revenue opportunities. So on the, what would be your left, on the left is the new build scenario. In the new build scenario, we're looking at a 12% increase in revenue after that six month payoff period. On the right, we've got two numbers. The number on the left is the increase from just top light. Remember, we're going from 900 to 1200, so we're adding light. We get roughly 30% more revenue by adding that light as top light. But when we add that light as intercanopy, that number is about 36, 37%. So there's a 8% increase above and beyond what you would get from just top light alone. And again, that's coming from increasing that A bud fraction that sells more in the market and decreasing waste that makes no money. Sorry, it's like a hundred clicks to get to the next slide. <laughs> so what, what are our real take homes on this? Take home number one, A grade increases. That's the, that's the key value point here. I'm also trapped by this thing, so forgive me for pacing in the same place. Trim goes down. Trim, trimming going down is important for two reasons. One, because it's, it makes very little money in the market, but also because you're, you're dealing with labor. So you can reduce the labor that goes into trimming by having a product that moves through the machines faster or requires less scissor trimming by hand. You have less than a one year ROI on the technology, which makes it highly competitive. You're not impacting your total yield or potency. So there's no risk to this technology, right? You're gonna be able to see improvements. Those improvements could be variable, but hands down, we absolutely saw no decrease in potency or in yield in this scenario. So the, the, the key concept here though, is that this matters when your market cares. If you're working in a market where the size and appearance of the flower commands no difference in price, then you're paying more for, for nothing that matters to you. However, if it does matter, then even a very small increase in the A grade fraction will lead to an ROI on this investment. The other scenario where this could potentially be interesting is for anyone who has a top light solution that they're not willing to or able to change, but that they want to see an increase in flux. So maybe you need more yield, but you can't undo your grid, or you just bought top lights, or you don't want to pull them off. In all of those scenarios, we can bring in inner canopy light and add that to your existing install. It is substantially less complicated to install in your canopy fixtures than it is to retrofit or change out your top lights. So you can add more flux in a way that is agnostic to your top light solution. So this gives people a new tool for upgrades that other, otherwise never existed. It's also a substantially lower CapEx investment to simply add 300 PPFT than it is to pull down an existing install that has a sunken cost to it and then replace that with a whole new technology.